Good morning, everyone. Good morning. We have gathered here on the third Sunday in Advent. A warm welcome to our service with Holy Eucharist. And thank you for being here to worship our Lord and Savior in spirit and in truth. Last Sunday, we lit the candle of peace. We light it and the candle of hope again as we remember that Christ who was born in Bethlehem will come again to judge the world and bring it everlasting peace. The third candle of Advent is the candle of joy. When the angel Gabriel told Mary that a special child would be born to her, she was filled with joy. She sang a song that began with the words, My soul magnifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. Just as the birth of Jesus gave great joy to his mother, so his presence in the world gave joy to those who had none before. He healed them and gave them hope and peace when they believed in him. From hope, peace, and love grows, grows joy. We light the candle of joy to remind us that when Jesus is born in us, we have joy and that through him, there will be everlasting joy on earth. Joy is like a light shining in a dark place. As we look at this candle, we celebrate the joy we find in Jesus Christ. Thanks, Pam. Yeah. Let us pray. We light this candle as a symbol of the joy to be found in your kingdom on earth. For the Lord elevates the lowly, releases the captive, and brings sight to the blind. We rejoice in his justice and mercy, faithful to all generations. Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins, whose mercy endures forever. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. Bind up the broken heart. Proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners. Proclaim the year of the Lord's favor, the day of vengeance of our God. Let us pray. Almighty, Almighty God, God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts, by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, 
that we may ever be happy and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. <clears throat> Amen. Yet, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. Jesus said, This is the great and first commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Let us pray. Eternal God, you sent John the Baptist to prepare the way for the coming of your Son. Grant us wisdom to see your purpose and open us to hear your will, that we too may prepare the way for Christ, who is coming in power and glory, to establish his rule of peace and justice through Jesus Christ, our Judge and our Redeemer, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. Our first reading is taken from Isaiah chapter 61, verses 1 to 4 and 8 to 11. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins, they shall raise up the former devastations, they shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice, I hate robbery and wrongdoing. 
I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exalt in my God. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with a robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. Hear the word of the Lord. Psalm 126, a harvest of joy. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we are those who dream. then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongues with shouts of joy. Then it was said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us. And we rejoice. Restore our fortunes, O Lord. By the water in the living. May those who sow in tears reap the shouts of joy. Those who go out weeping, bearing the seed for sowing, shall come home with shouts of joy, carrying their shoes. <coughs> Second reading is taken from Theologian, chapter 5, verses 16 to 24. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, keep thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise prophecies. But test everything. Hold fast to what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. May God of peace himself sanctify you entirely. And may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound. And blameless at the end coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do this. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks.
finds one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thongs of his sandal. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. John chapter 1 beginning at the 6th verse. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but he confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. Then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said. I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They are asking, why then are you preaching? Are you baptizing if you are neither Messiah, no Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the strap of his sandal. This took place in Bethany across the Jordan where John was baptizing. For the gospel of the Lord, praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As uh, human beings, um, we are tempted to, tempted to be prideful in many ways. We are proud about our studies, our talents, gifts, families, and also in our riches or wealth and also um, in, on our hereditary or the family ties, friends and the list goes on and on. So these things for many are the hindrance who try to come closer to God. This morning I would like to, once again, as I did last week, um, I would like to continue with the uh, Advent readings, which especially comes from the Gospel according to St. John chapter 1, a few verses. 6 to 8 and then 19 to 28. So when we have this complex, the pride, prideful heart and also being proud about ourselves, we need healing. We need a cure for this disease, I would say. Spiritual disease. So it's a healing or cure for the Messiah complex. We become Messiahs. 
we try to save our lives. In many times, not a few times, many, many times, we rely on, on us, on our abilities, and on our reach, and also the gifts and talents. It shouldn't be like that um, for a Christian. John the Baptist is a prominent figure in Advent, showing up each year in at least a couple of the Gospel readings and reappearing in January when we remember the baptism of the Lord. In listening closely to John the Baptist, one senses deep humility. I am not the Messiah. I am not Elijah, the greatest of the prophets. I am not the main attraction. The main attraction is coming and I am not worthy to shine his shoes. This humility was not only John's perception of himself. It is also recorded in the Gospel writer's description of him. John the Baptist was not the light. He came to bear witness to the greatest light. It is important that we claim John as a model for our lives as human beings and as Christians. You are not the Messiah, I am not the Messiah. A Messiah is someone who saves from sin, rules and fixes people and their lives. Many in Israel were waiting for a Messiah in the first century. Life was difficult, harsh and oppressive. John's entrance into the drama of Advent each year might not seem relevant at first glance. But in fact, his is a needed voice. Humility is a misunderstood concept. And it may be helpful to say what it is and what it is not. It is not law self esteem It is not low self-esteem. We are created in the image of God. And that is good. Humility is not false modesty. We have been endowed with gifts. And they are to be used for the glory of God and the common good. One preacher Put it this way, humility is not thinking less of ourselves. Humility is thinking of ourselves less. We could easily understand that humility is thinking of ourselves less. For many, it is all mixed together with the drive to succeed and with ambition, performance and goals. If we do not have these hopes for ourselves, we surely have them for our children and grandchildren. There is something constructive about all of this. Objectives are accomplished. Goals are met. Good is, is, good is done. But there is also a dark side that can be a heavy burden. We begin to think that we are in fact the source of light. 
Sometimes, though, the bulb begins to dim. We might not use the precise language, but we begin to think that we are, in fact, the Messiah. We see other people as problems to be solved. We see daily lives as a series of messes to be cleaned up. Dilemmas to be sorted through. Damages to be repaired. If you and I do not take care of it, who will? The symptoms of this dark side are burnout, cynicism and frustration with other people and paradoxically self-rejection. But remember, <laughs> you and I are not the Messiah. We have limitations and boundaries. Advent comes along each year to give us this dose of humility. When once again we meet John who helps us to get clear perspectives. Make no mistake, John the Baptist was a person of strength. He attracted people to his project. Among those born of women, Jesus says, no one has risen greater than John the Baptist. Gospel according to St. Matthew chapter 11, verse 11. John was not weak. What did you go out into the wilderness to look at? Jesus asked the disciples who had gone in search of John. A reed shaken by the wind? The literal meaning was a weather vane that bends with the currents of the wind. John was not weak. He was strong. He could withstand the forces of the winds and the storms, but he was humble. His humility is found precisely in his understanding of who he is and who he is not. Humility is not weakness, but the awareness of the source of our strength. John reminds us that we are human. I came across the insight that there is a connection between the words of humanity, humility, and human. Each word has a common origin in our word humus. My parents had a humus pile that included soil and leaves and kitchen garbage and probably some things I wouldn't want to mention. <laughs> It was a mixture of the most organic matter, the com compost pile, and it was a rich, fertile place. Gardeners, you know. <coughs> that says something about us. In our humanity, we are always a mixture of many things, and out of all of it come life and growth. Humility and humor are connected in our ability to laugh at ourselves and sometimes we do have to laugh at ourselves. This is related to our humanity. We have limitations, boundaries, and we are finite. We are mortals. Humanity is a reminder of our need to be grounded again, the connection with the earth. Dust to dust. 
it is not accidental that the most fundamental posture of humility is kneeling. This self-awareness prepares the way for something more, something greater. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for speaking to us. Thank you, Lord, for giving us lessons through this passage. Thank you, Lord, for John the Baptist and his ministry as your forerunner to prepare the way for you to come into the world, the incarnated God. Lord, one of the lessons which we learn through this passage is humility. Without that, we are unable to come before you with our broken lives. We are sinners. Because of you, we have hope for our life. You have given us the promise of forgiveness, salvation, and eternal life. Thank you, Lord, for reminding, reminding us of the importance of this quality which we need to have in our life all the time, not only inside the church, at our homes, but also wherever we go, wherever we stay, as long as, long as we are placed in, on this planet. Lord, thank you, Lord, Help us to not only listening to this message, but also remembering these lessons in our hearts and in our lives. And also to become the examples for the community in which we live. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Shall we all stand to say the creed, the Nicene Creed together? Let us together affirm the faith of the church. We believe in one God.
Almighty God, your Son Jesus Christ has promised that you will hear us when we ask in faith. Receive the prayers we offer. Let us pray for all the people and for the church throughout the world. Please be seated now. We are going to have our intercessory prayers. Rejoice in the Lord. We rejoice, O Lord, in your liberation. May your church proclaim your freedom and release. We pray for our local reverends Lawrence and, and Balagan and his family, Mitili, Jessica, and Noeline. Ainsley, our lay minister, and give thanks and pray for the liturgical committee and for our parish of St. Stephen. We pray for Susan and Derek Smith and family, for Rosemary and Bill Smith and family, Fran and Graham Snell and family. We give thanks and pray for Reverend Sujit Solomon David and his family as they prepare for ministry at St. Stephen. Set us free from all that holds us back from proclaiming your glory. Rejoice in the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord. We rejoice, O oh Lord, in your justice. Guard the nations in ways that enable all people to sing for joy. We pray for your peace in the world, for meaningful dialogue leading to peace between nations. We pray especially for Israel and Palestine, and Ukraine and Russia. Our Prime Minister, Anthony Albanese, the leader of the opposition, Peter Dutton, Premiers Jacinta Allen, and John Peshutu leader of the opposition, and our local members, Mary Dole and Jackson Taylor, and the City of Knox Council. Restore your balance in trade and cohesive living. Rejoice in the Lord. We rejoice, O Lord, in your favor. Pour out your grace on our communities that they may abound in your love. We give thanks and pray for Kids Hope, Knox Emergency Food Relief, Knox Infolink and the Milo and Wellbeing Ministry at Bayswater Secondary College. And we pray for the recipients of the Christmas hampers. Bless our homes and those closest to us with whom we delight in your praise. Rejoice in the Lord. We rejoice, O oh Lord, without ceasing, giving thanks in all circumstances. May we hold fast through whatever trials beset us. We pray especially for Ross and Peter, Brian and John, Matthew, Renee, Ellie and Donnie, Corey, Amber, Conrad and Paula and family, Isaac Reeve, Danny, Eddie, we pray for Sarah, Andrew, Anita, Bill, Leah, Mary, Carol, Sharon, and Trudy. And all of us known to us in need of prayer, either aloud on our lips or in the silence of our hearts. God of peace, sanctify and keep us in your faithfulness. Rejoice in the Lord. We rejoice, O Lord, in your eternal mercy. All oh, dear to yourself, all who have passed from glory to glory. We remember those in our year's mind. We remember Frances Whitley Keegan, John Desmond Hoem, Elizabeth Ethel Harris, Shirley Barber, rest in peace, rest in peace, Sue Heron. Count us acceptable in your sight at your coming again. Rejoice in the Lord. Almighty God, you have promised to hear our prayers. God, I don't hear us in faith. We may by your grace receive through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Then he said to them, Go away, eat the fat and drink sweet wine. 
and send portions of them to those for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy to our Lord. And do not be grieved, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Let us pray. We do not presume to come to your table this Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but that in your manifold and great mercies, we are not worthy so much as to have our commands under your table. But you are the same Lord, whose name it is for grace to have mercy. Grant us therefore, precious Lord, so that in the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and in his life, that we may no more dwell in him, The Lord comes, bringing light, things now hidden in darkness, and disclosing the purpose of the heart. Let us open our hearts and prepare for His coming, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. Merciful God, our Maker and our Judge, we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. And in what we have to do. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We repent and are sorry for all our sins. Father, forgive us. Strengthen us to love and obey you in human supply through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who has promised forgiveness to all who turn to him in faith, pardon you and set you free from all your sins, strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Shall we all stand for the reading of peace? We are the body of Christ. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace be with you.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have these gifts to share. Accept and use offerings for your glory and for the service of your kingdom. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. All glory and honor be yours always and everywhere, mighty Creator, ever living God. We give you thanks and praise for your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, who by the power of your Spirit, was born of Mary and lived as one of us. By his death on the cross and rising to new life, he offered the one true sacrifice for sin and obtained an eternal deliverance for his people. We thank you that when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may with joy behold his appearing and in confidence stand before him who redeems us from sin and death and makes us heirs of everlasting life. Therefore, with the angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name for ever praising you and singing. <laughs> God, we thank you for these gifts of your creation, this bread and wine. And we pray that by your word and Holy Spirit, we who eat and drink them may be partakers of Christ's body and blood. On the night he was betrayed, Jesus took bread. And when he had given you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup and again giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, drink from this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Therefore we do as our Saviour has commanded, proclaiming his offering of himself, made once for all upon the cross, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again. We celebrate with this bread and this cup, his one perfect and sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Renew us by your Holy Spirit, unite us in the body of your Son, and bring us with all your people into the joy of your eternal kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord, 
with whom and in whom in the fellowship of the holy spirit we worship you father in songs of never ending praise As our Savior Christ has taught us, we are confident to pray, Our Father in heaven. As this broken bread was once many grains which have been gathered together and made one bread, so may your church be gathered. people of God. Come, let us take this holy sacrament of the body and blood of Christ in remembrance that he died for us and feed on him in our hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
great. We thank you that you have fed us with the bread of life and the cup of salvation. As we joy joyfully await your Son, keep us ever watchful that we may be ready to stand before him on the day of his coming. Amen. Most loving God, you send us the word of your love. Give us Christ and thankfully and encourage in the power of your spirit. Let's have a word on this verse. Uh, just quickly about Knox Infolink. Many thanks to the ladies group for their generous donation to Knox Infolink. It was very much appreciated. I don't know if you have seen in the news, it was either last night or certainly in the paper this morning. There is a food place similar to Knox Infolink but over on the other side of Melbourne their demand has grown exponentially for food and other goods. And yet they are facing the prospect of having to be closed due to lack of funding. Hopefully the state or federal government will come through, but that is the real risk some of these places that are helping the needy face. When I was at well, when Jean and I were at Knox Info Link uh, on Monday, I asked, as I occasionally do, what stuff do you need? And I must say their shells were looking a bit bare. What we give has literally gone, is literally gone within a matter of days. There's no, the, the turnover of donations is less than a week. So what would they like? Milk in one litre containers. One litre, not two, because with one litres, that does an individual, that does a couple. And if it's a family, well, they can give them two or three. Spaghetti, or spaghetti or um, meals meals in a can. And, and as I have pointed out before, single people who need the food, particularly those who are homeless, they can open this, put it on a barbecue in a park, heat it up, and there's lunch or dinner for them. Sugar, kilogram packets. I was a bit surprised, but yes. Custard, it is still there on the list. And ladies deodorant. So many thanks from the Knox Info Link to you and Stevens for your ongoing support for a critical mission in our area at this point of time. And just one more thing. Two weeks ago, when I was getting the stuff, a parishioner came up to me and said, I really don't know what I need to buy. Can you get some stuff for me? And put it in the basket. So he gave me, that person gave me $50. I said, fine. So afterwards, Jen and I went down to the um, factory outlet there in High Street, Bayswater, and yes, there's the plug. Um, and what did I get? Well, as I said, with the spaghetti, I got a slab of 12 tins. And I also got a slab of 12 tins of baked beans. They have been about $37. But that was 24 meals. 
I then got two cartons of custard. And by then I was up in the $40. So I got some small soaps, some toothbrushes, and toothpaste. When I got to the checkout and I paid for it, it came to $50.10. <laughs> so God's hand was definitely there. Many thanks to that parishioner for their generous donation. But it just shows you with what $50 we can do to support those in need in the local community. I'm not saying you all have to give $50 and so on, but I'm just showing you, just giving you an example of, well, what $50 can do. $20 can also do similar. Every little bit helps. Thank you. We had a lovely um, fair, uh, well, a lovely um, end of year break up with our um, Kids Hope children. Um, and thank you to Gwen and to Rosemary and to Ainsley who provided us with craft activities to do. The school gave us um, a lovely afternoon tea and I had the principal come in um, to thank us very much for um, the church's commitment to Kids Hope and also um, the ongoing commitment that we um, do with the um, hampers and stuff. They're very, very thankful for the church's support. Um, so that was lovely. And I um, made a big batch of um, gingerbread biscuits and took them up and put them in the staff room for the staff with a card from St Stephen's to, to, to wish them a, a happy Christmas. Thank you in advance for everybody who's put the time and effort into uh, uh, to get this event ready. I am looking for somebody to be our narrator for our um, nativity um, drama um, during the service. So if you would like to do that, the script's written. Um, it's just a matter of reading it out at the appropriate places and pausing long enough for... Um, whoever's in the play to say their little bits. Uh, it's all fairly straightforward, but um, it would be good if somebody could do that. I don't want to do it. Thank you. I'm doing enough. Just a gentle reminder, Elizabeth is here, so after the last hymn, could you please remain seated? Thank you. Okay, uh, before I say the blessings, uh, uh, once again, I thank you all for uh, worshipping with us uh, as a family of God this morning, and uh, during our Christmas uh, period, um, especially for the services. If you have some friends or relatives visiting you and staying with you, uh, please encourage them to come to our services. And uh, also, as you did in the past, pray for each other. And um, so it's, it's going to be a busy period, so um, please continue to 
uphold each other, e each other in your prayers and also the ministry of our church. Thank Be you. Vicar, yes. may I just welcome somebody? We yeah. have a visitor from the US of A here today. Uh, he's originally from uh, the old country, but he's now a, a American citizen, I'm told. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, shall we all stand for the blessings? Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon you and make you ready to meet him when he comes in glory. And the blessing of God, the Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go.